Hey, what's the matter with you? Why are you picking up the phone when I call you, huh? Are you not seeing that I'm calling you? You know we talked about this before. You're always supposed to have your phone and ringer turned on. Tom, I'm sorry, but I just can't talk right now. I'm busy, okay? Call back again later. Excuse me? What did you just say to me? Why can't you answer the phone and you have time to text me? What's up with that? You've been gone since this morning. What are you even getting up to anyways, huh? You've got a lot of explaining to do. That's right. I've been gone since this morning since I'm visiting Fiona in the hospital. And that's where I am right now. And why am I not going to be taking any of your phone calls right now? So can you please just wait a little bit and then we can talk later? Whatever. I don't need to wait. If you could text, then I can tell you what I wanted to tell you just like this. That's fine then. What is it? What did you want to talk to me about that's so urgent? Well, you know how I had that one glass cup set that I really like, right? I just wanted to know where you put it. I've been looking all over the house for it, and I can't find it anywhere at all. Okay, Tom, if this is all that you wanted to talk to me about, how about I just help you look for it when I get home? The doctor has just called us in to explain what the reports are saying. I just hope that Fiona's fever will settle soon. I don't want your help finding it later. I want to find it right now, so just tell me where you put it, okay? I need it right this second. Oh my gosh, I just can't with you sometimes. What glass cups are you talking about? Why would I know it? I'm talking about the glass cups that my dad gave me as a gift when I started my own business. It came in a set and they look really nice. I have an important client coming over to the house later today and I wanted to have those glasses out so I could show them off a bit. Oh, those things? Yeah, I threw all those cups out. They're all long gone by now. Hold on a second, you what? What is the matter with you? Just who said that it was okay if you threw them away? Those were a gift. I really like those glasses. Why would you just go and do that to them? I know you like them, but you broke them all, didn't you? What are you talking about? When did I break those glasses? I don't remember doing that. You really don't remember? You got really mad at me last month and threw your ashtray at me. Don't you remember that I ducked by the ashtray, went flying into our cupboard, and smashed into one of those glasses you liked? All right. I guess I remember throwing that, but I don't remember breaking anything. Did I really end up smashing all the cups? There's not even a couple left? That's right. They're all broken now. There isn't a single one left. Oh, crap. This is really bad. I had no idea they were all gone already. Darn it. I really did want to try using them today. And just what were you thinking putting them in a place where they could get broken that easily? Don't you know how much those meant to me? Why would you let them get all smashed up like that? Are you really trying to blame me for why your special cups are gone? You were the one that literally tried to take my head off with an ashtray. I know that's your go-to response when you get frustrated, but it is honestly ridiculous and you need to stop. I mean, I could write a long list about all the things in our house that you've broken when you've gotten mad. Don't you remember when we literally had to install new cupboards in our house because you broke those too? But all of those are your fault! I only broke those things because you got me so mad that I ended up doing so. If you weren't getting me mad all the time, then I would still have my favorite glasses! Do you remember why you threw your ashtray at me, Tom? It was because I asked you to keep leaving the freezer door open. Do you really think that that's a reasonable response to someone politely asking you not to leave appliances running? I don't get why you had to nag me about it, though. Instead of opening your big mouth, you could have just closed it yourself, you know? That's why I'm always in such a bad mood. You always try to nag me and boss me around whenever I make the tiniest mistake. Sure, let's even say that I am just a little bossy from time to time. Do you really think that means I deserve to have things thrown at me? I really don't see how you can actually see this as anyone else's fault but yours. So please, just stop acting that way. Not only is it dangerous, but it's also just plain expensive. How dare you tell me to knock it off when you're the one that's always trying to piss me off so much? You know, I'm starting to get a little mad right now, in fact. Is that what you're trying to do? Are you trying to piss me off again? You know that I'm not, Tom. I don't try and go out of my way to upset you. But maybe just take a breath and calm down. Besides, the point of the matter is that the glasses you're looking for don't exist anymore, okay? 
So just use another set for your guest today. I'll prepare some food for you both when I get back home. Okay, that's fine. But well, my uncle's gonna be there too. There's a guy coming as a client of my company that he helped me set up with. What am I supposed to say to my uncle if he asks about the glasses? I really don't think it's all that serious. I mean, do you really think your uncle is going to care? Just tell him that you dropped them and that they all broke. I'm sure if you just apologize and say it was an accident, he won't mind. You really just don't get it at all, do you? Did you know that it was all my uncle's efforts that has basically saved this family? He was the one who started his huge business, and he was the one kind enough to help me start mine as well. He even helped me secure this client that's coming to visit. And apparently this guy is a really big deal. This is important to the company, so I can't let a single thing go wrong. Do you understand? Not a single tiny little thing is allowed to go wrong, or else everything is going to be ruined. Well, I don't know what you want me to tell you. The cups simply aren't in the house anymore. They're broken and smashed and all gone now. But I really don't think it's worth getting so upset about. Your uncle is a very magnanimous man, and I doubt he'll mind all that much. You don't get to decide what is and isn't a big deal. Do you understand me? But it's just glasses. We have so many other glasses that guests can use at the house. What's wrong with those? I don't have to even begin to explain to you what's wrong with what you just said. But now that I know we don't have the glasses, you make sure to buy some on the way home. I looked them up, and they should be at a home goods store on the mall on the way home, okay? It's a pretty big brand, so they should still have some in stock. Tom, you really want me to go and buy you glasses to replace your old ones? I'm still at the hospital, you know. No, you listen here. My uncle and the client are going to be arriving here around 7 at night, okay? So just do what you have to to make it on time. I'll take care of things here. So just don't forget to buy those glasses, okay? I really think that you're kind of missing the forest for the trees here, Tom. I mean, don't you care at all that our daughter is in the hospital with a fever? I'm really not sure if I should be leaving her alone here in the hospital to go and do some shopping. Just do as I say and buy those damn glasses for me, got it? Deal with the other thing later. This is what's important now. How can you say that this is more important than your own daughter's health? She's had a fever for a few days and she seems so weak. She even goes into shaking fits now and then and you're telling me you'd rather I be out shopping than taking care of our daughter? Do you not realize who is coming home for dinner tonight? This client is so important, not only to the company, but to me keeping my business. What about that don't you understand? Do you think that I have time to care about the health of my daughter when there is so much more writing on the line right now? Why did she have to go to the hospital today of all days? You really should have been keeping a better eye on her and making sure that she never got sick in the first place. Tom, we have a baby. Babies get sick. I can't order a baby to take better care of itself. These things happen and we have to be flexible. I seriously can't with you. But fine, finish at the hospital and then buy some of the glasses on your way home. And then put the own in the baby room and make sure no one can even hear her. If my client gets sick because of my sick baby and irresponsible wife, I'll never, ever hear the end of it. I don't even know what to say to that, Tom. Do you really not care about Fiona or I at all? This is just insulting now. Tom, how many times have I told you not to throw things when you get mad? We have talked about this over and over and over again, and yet you just refuse to listen to me. Not only that, but you really hurt Fiona. Why in the world would you throw the TV remote like that? You're a monster, do you know that? Well, it's not like I was trying to hit Fiona. I was aiming for you, obviously. You shouldn't have been taking a nap like that. Are you telling me you didn't even check to see if Fiona was close by? Besides, you just shouldn't be throwing anything at anyone for any reason at all. Well, I guess that my hand just slipped and that's why my aim was off. Besides, it was only a TV remote. You acting like it was some super serious. And then you had to call an ambulance on top of that. You're an even bigger baby than Fiona. Honestly, do you have any idea how embarrassing it is to have an ambulance show up in front of your house? 
Tom, you literally hurt your own baby. Do you not care about that at all? Did you know that Fiona is going to need stitches because of you? This isn't just a little bruise or light injury. This is serious. You're just terrible. But I'm telling you that I wasn't trying to hit the baby at all. Doesn't matter to anything. Besides, you shouldn't have made me so mad in the first place. You know what happens when I get mad. So why were you trying to get me mad? What did I even do? I was literally taking a nap in the living room after you said you were going to hop in the shower. And yet you chose to wake me up with violence, ended up hitting our baby instead. And you still haven't even apologized for it. Fiona's shaking probably has less to do with her being sick and more to do with being traumatized by you. You know what I'm doing, so quit nagging me, woman. I'm the man of the house and what I say goes. So when I tell you not to piss me off, don't do it. Ugh, can't talk to you. I can feel myself getting worked up already. I'm going to bed now. Don't talk to me anymore. You're just going to go to bed? You injure your own child and you're not even going to come and see her? I have things I need to do tomorrow. I don't have time for you. Don't you know where we're in peak busy season here at work? Well, if you're not going to be here for our daughter, then I'm not going to come back home. I honestly can't believe how selfishly you're acting right now. You're not caring at all for your family. Oh, do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. At least with a nag like you and that little brat out of the house, I might be able to get some shut-eye. You didn't actually just call your baby that you injured a little brat, did you? You don't even care at all about what you've done, do you? I don't know why I expected anything better from you in the first place, though. And just what even is there to worry about? It'll all be fine. The only thing I should be worrying about right now is what I'll be working on in the office tomorrow. Don't you know that it's the husband's job to worry about work more than anything? I don't even know what to say to that, to be honest. In fact, I really don't think I have anything more to say to you at all. But just know that I won't be going back home after this. Not now or ever. Hey, come on. How long are you going to be playing this game with me, huh? You've been gone long enough. Now it's time for you to come back home. The laundry's already piled ceiling high. The sink is full of dishes. And the whole house is a mess. Don't you realize that you have things to take care of back here? It's been about a week since you and I last spoke. I was wondering when I was finally going to be hearing from you. But instead of coming to apologize for all the bad that you've done, you're just ordering me back home to clean up after you. Do you even care about how your daughter is doing since you launched the TV remote at her? Oh boy, here we go again. You really need to get this little sob story of yours a break. I already told you that it was an accident, so just drop it! But you still realize that you injured someone because of an object that you threw, right? I asked you time and time again to stop with that behavior. But you just refused to even listen to me. And I don't care if it was an accident. The fact is that you hit your own daughter. Do you really think you're not responsible at all for any of this? Man, you are such a pain in the ass. Do you know that? It was just a stupid TV remote. It's not like it was a brick or something. You really think that makes it any better? How many excuses are you going to make for yourself? You do realize that Fiona had to have three stitches because of what you did to her, right? Why are you always on my back about this, huh? I'm telling you that it's not all my fault. You were the one that pissed me off, remember? You pissed me off. You forced me to act that way. And now you're trying to blame me for your mistakes. That's just shameful. I don't even know what to say to that right now. You injure your own child and you refuse to take responsibility? Well, just know that now you've made me mad as well. But more than anything, I'm just disappointed in you. Wait, what? Disappointed? What do you mean? Just who do you think you are to be disappointed in me? I'm afraid you're not talking to Jan anymore. But don't worry. She's informed me all about what's happened here. And I had to say that you have failed both as a father and as a husband. What is this? Who are you? Put my wife back on the phone right now! This is between Jan and I, and we don't need someone butting in. This is your Uncle Charlie. And I have to say that I really am just sick of you, Tom. And in light of all this, I'm afraid that I simply can't keep doing business with you and your company. Wait, Uncle Charlie, is that really you? I don't get it. What are you doing with Jan right now? 
I'm with Jan because she told me that she needed to talk with me about something. And I was certainly suspicious of what she had to tell me. After all, I remember during our meeting, you told me not to listen to anything she had to say. But... I don't get it. I can't believe that she would suck you into this mess of ours. Oh, trust me, I don't get it either. Your wife is in tears and your baby's at the hospital with a bandage around her poor little head. And yet you're at home and not showing the least bit of concern for your family that you're supposed to be taking care of. No, wait, hold on a second. I think that there's been a big misunderstanding here. I mean, it really is just that my hand slipped, that's it. And whatever Jan is telling you, even if it isn't a lie, is over-exaggerated way beyond what the truth is. So please, you can't let her make me out to be the bad guy. Oh, just shut up. Do you really think I'm gonna buy a word of that? You think those stitches the doctor's putting Fiona are just for show? I've heard all about how you flip out on Jan and will start throwing things at her. So I don't know what this business about your hand slipping is when this is a noted behavior of yours. Not only that, but Jan has told me that she's talked to this about you and asked you to stop repeatedly. Uncle Charlie, please, you have to believe me. This whole thing is just one big mistake. I mean, it was just bad luck for everyone, that's all. You have to know that I would never do anything like this on purpose, right? You know that's not me. This was an accident, that's all. Jan also told me about what happened to those glasses that I bought you when you opened up your business. She told me that you blamed her for them being broken after you were the one who smashed them. I can't believe you put your own wife through so much. You're just horrible, you know that? But it really was an accident. I just wasn't paying attention. But I'm so, so sorry for breaking those glasses. I didn't mean to. Besides, you have to understand that I wasn't trying to hurt anyone at all. It's just that these things just happen. So then it's no one's fault. Your anger is just a force of nature that your family should expect to live with? You really are just so ridiculous, you know that? And what's more is you're pathetic. You're terrorizing those weaker than you. But now that I've come to call your bluff, you go and pretend like it's no one's fault that all this has happened. But no matter what you say, it doesn't change the fact that you've unleashed horrible abuse on your family. Well, sure, I might have gotten a little violent at times, but saying that I was being abusive is just a little much, don't you think? I mean, I was never trying to abuse anyone. I never even wanted to hurt anyone to begin with, you know? There you go again trying to make excuses for what you did. But no, I'm not buying it. You used violence to try to control your wife. And you blamed her for all the damage that you caused. And even when you injured your own child, you couldn't take responsibility. Instead, you blamed Jan for provoking you to do what you did. Well, I don't want my business having anything to do with such a horrible man. So consider our contract ended. But if you pull out your business from us, then we're going to go under. We'll fall apart without your support. If that's true, then that's your fault for not finding another client base aside from my own. But think of it this way. You've been riding my coattails for so long. Now you'll finally have the chance to make it on your own. Please, don't do this to me. I'll have to start all over. Think of all the work that I've done for the good of both of our companies. Doesn't that mean anything at all to you? You think that your company has any value at all compared to mine? The business I was giving to you could be done by a thousand other firms and all for less money and higher quality. I was only supporting you because you're family, but you're not anymore after what I've seen you do to your actual family. So consider this my way of saying that the rest of the family will be hearing about what you've done. As for Jan, she's going to divorce you. You'll be hearing from one of my lawyers about it shortly. Have a nice life. Hey, Chan, are you there? You're not actually staying at my uncle's place right now, are you? Please, I want you to come home. Can you do that for me? I am at your Uncle Charlie's place, if you must know. He invited me to stay with him so that I wouldn't have to pay any money to go and stay at a hotel. 
but I already told you that I'm never going back to home. So if that's all you came to ask me to do, then you can go ahead and save your breath right now, Tom. Well, we could talk about all that later. But is it really true what my uncle said? That you were wanting to get a divorce? He didn't really actually mean that, did he? I mean, I know that I might have acted a little rashly now and then, but surely we can fix this, right? We don't have to go in and get a divorce over something like this, right? After all, it's not like I ever hurt you when I was throwing things, isn't that right? You're right, Tom. You never hurt me during your tantrums and outbursts of violence. But that doesn't mean that I was living in fear when I was around you. And besides, you might not have hurt me, but you certainly hurt our baby. Not that you've said a single sorry word about that. Well, I already said that it was an accident, but how is Fiona? Is she okay? Did the doctors have anything more to say about her after the stitches? No, so now you want to pretend to be a good father to your baby. Yes, she is going to be just fine, or at least that's what the doctor said. I'm off a half a mind to start looking out for a child psychologist for when she's a few years older, though. Who knows how the things she's seen as a baby are going to affect her growing up. Well, you know that she wasn't the only one to get hurt in all this, right? Uncle Charlie said he was ending all of his contracts with my business, so I've had to start thinking of ways to keep myself afloat. You are not seriously trying to make yourself out to be the victim here, are you? And your uncle did what he did because he realized that he can't trust you at all. So I don't know why you're bringing this up with me. If you want to talk to your uncle about it, you can go to him for all I care. Well, of course this involves you too, though. My uncle did what he did because of what you told him. And now he's going around and telling the rest of our relatives about what a horrible husband I've been. You need to go and set the record straight or else I won't have a reputation in this city at all anymore. Well, that works fine for me. The more people that know the truth about you, the better. That's what I think anyways. But I don't care at all about your business or your reputation. You can't be serious about that, Ray. I mean, are you saying that you really don't care at all what happens to me now? After all that we've been through? That is exactly what I'm saying, Tom. After all the crap that you've put me through, I couldn't care less about what happens to your life. Is this really all you came to talk to me about? You still haven't apologized. You still haven't taken responsibility for what you did to our baby. And you're only asking that I act in a way to benefit you. Please! I'm gonna be left with nothing, don't you get that? Can't you just go and talk to my uncle about this? You're the only person I can go to that can fix all this. If you don't, then my entire life is gonna be ruined! And if that's what happens, then you only have yourself to blame. After all, your uncle did what he did because he heard of how you treated me. I never told him anything wrong about the way that you acted at home when you would get mad. I only gave him the truth. If you want to go out and try to convince people that you acted the way you did because I upset you, then feel free. But I don't think that any responsible adult would sympathize with what you did. But I'll be ruined. I'll never be able to come back to this. I don't know what I'll do with the rest of my life if I have to start all over. I won't have a business, or a wife, or a kid, or anything. And when you finally hit rock bottom, and you look around and realize that you've been left with nothing and no one to support you, maybe then you'll finally realize the error of your ways. But when that day finally comes, if it ever comes at all, I don't want to be there to witness it. I hope that you change, Tom, but not for my sake, and not for Fiona's sake. I don't even mean for your sake. But just for the sake of anyone else who's going to have the displeasure of having to interact with you for any reason. Now, goodbye. After that, Charlie followed through on his promise to cut off his business ties with Tom. Then he helped me pick out a good divorce lawyer who was able to make a strong case against Tom right away. Tom was forced to take out loans to try and keep his business afloat, but it was only prolonging the inevitable. After he was ordered to pay out a fee for the abusive behavior and ordered to pay child support, Tom finally gave up and declared bankruptcy. With his reputation completely ruined and no chance of any other business in the industry hiring him, Tom's job hunt went worse than expected. Now I hear that he lives in a tiny little apartment, working multiple jobs just to try and make ends meet. As for Fiona and I, we took Tom's money and moved to be closer to my parents. They were so happy to get to be closer to us and have been so helpful as I adjust to being a single mother. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.